What's up guys, Crypto Muser here with your daily news and analysis on the crypto markets. So just like I was talking about yesterday guys, we're in the weekend here with low volume. Uh, don't expect much out of Bitcoin here. Honestly expected a little more volatility, but it's nice to see that we're still ranging in that $38,000 to $40,000 price level. Um, what we're looking for now is maybe tonight when the Asian markets open up and looking into tomorrow morning um, for that bullish momentum to come in and get us above that $41,600 uh, resistance level and then that would start you know some bullish momentum to get us in an uptrend here um, a lot of attention around crypto and bitcoin at the moment right um, will russia use uh, crypto to circumvent around these sanctions the eu all of a sudden is trying to rush through regulations on crypto because of russia maybe getting around these sanctions with crypto you know it's just looking like all of a sudden there's a lot of tension around payment systems and money and crypto and uh, that could be very bullish for crypto right so I have a couple news articles, a couple on-chain analytics that I want to show you guys in this video. But before I do, if you guys could please like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. It would be very much appreciated. But let's get right into the video, guys. So the first thing I have here is some on-chain statistics. So this is documenting Bitcoin. A record 76.5% of all Bitcoin has not moved in at least six months. So what is what this is telling you is that there's a, a serious, uh, basically, foundation here for Bitcoin right? 76% of people are holding long-term, right? And you've been seeing this a lot in the last couple of months with, um, you know, Bitcoin and crypto that the on-chain analytics have never been more solid, right? Obviously, you know, the sentiment around the market has been, you know, all-time low in the last, you know, three to five months. Um, the TA, the technical analysis, hasn't been really that great, um, even though that has been changing in the, in the last couple of days or weeks. Um, the weekly and monthly chart are starting to look very bullish too with, for TA, um, but the on-chain analytics have never been more solid. You know, the last three to five months, um, that's been the one um, thing that people have been mentioning that, you know, the on-chain analytics of the long-term holders, the people taking their, uh, their uh, crypto off exchanges, um, it's never been more solid, right? There's a foundation there that could really, you know, get us um, to start a bullish momentum, bullish momentum here, right? There's a, if there's serious foundation for Bitcoin, that means a serious foundation for all of crypto. So it would make it easier um, for the buyers to come in and really push this price back up. So definitely looking, and especially everything going on right now, like I was saying, a lot of moving parts with, this could be very bullish for crypto um, all around the world right now with all this attention all of a sudden to uh, towards crypto and like I said, payment systems and, and just money as a whole, right? So let's get into this first news article that I saw here. Ukraine government raises over 10 million in cryptocurrency donations. Um, Ukraine government has raised more than 10 million in cryptocurrency donations, according to blockchain analytics firm Liptic. Total crypto donations to the Ukrainian government and NGOs supporting the military now stand at $16.7 million, Liptic said. The development shows how Ukraine is turning to crypto for assistance during this Russia military offensive in the country. So as much as they want to say that, you know, uh, Bitcoin and crypto is only used for nefarious reasons, you know, it's for money laundering and uh, for criminals. And now recently they said it's for, for white supremacists. Um, this shows you the benefits of crypto, right? This is how you get money to people instantly, right? Using banks, you know, you can hack into those systems. They're old clunky systems that have failure rates of anywhere from 10 to 15 percent. Um, using crypto, you can send money to places that you need that need it instantly, right? So this is showing the rest of the world the benefits of crypto all of a sudden, right? Um, Ukraine, obviously, uh, they need a lot of money. Um, they need help. And uh, I can't say that enough that, you know, if we're not going to send troops, we need to send money. We need to send uh, um, ammunition, uh, military uh, equipment, anything we need to send, uh, we, need, we need to send them, right? But money is a huge thing that they need too. Um, obviously, using the banking system, like I said, you know, the Russians could maybe hack into that system. They could they could freeze accounts. They could stop accounts from uh, or money getting there. But using uh, Bitcoin and crypto, um, they can't stop it, right? Um, and this is just showing how easy it is to donate um, to Ukraine right now. Everyday people are sending, um, you know, Bitcoin, Ethereum, uh, USDT, I'm say, uh, seeing. And it's getting there instantly to people who need it. And this is just great to see, honestly. And like I said, this is definitely bullish for crypto because, like I said, they've been calling us uh, criminals and money launderers for years. These are the benefits where crypto can be used 
uh, where other financial institutions and other financial instruments can't work, right? So very bullish for crypto for sure. And um, hopefully we see more and more money um, getting to um, Ukraine where they need it. Um, so the next thing I want to talk about. So yesterday I talked about Christine Lagarde. She is the EU central bank president, right? She was talking about how we need to get regulations uh, for crypto um, passed as soon as possible because we need to stop Russia from um, circumventing around these sanctions, right? And what she says here in this, uh, I'm not going to show you this speech, but basically she just says, you know, we need to get this regulation passed ASAP and we need to figure out how to stop Russia from getting around sanctions. And she thinks that, and she mentions that, you know, we can stop them because, you know, Russia can use, can, you know, turn their money into crypto, but then they have to turn, uh, eventually convert that crypto back into fiat to use it, right? And she's kind of right there in some sense, but in another sense that uh, Russia could just keep that money in crypto. And anybody basically, you know, they're not going to use, they could really start their own crypto at, at this point. Russia could have their own, you know, uh, digital ruble, whatever you want to call it. And um, it could, they could back it by gold. And whoever wants to do business with um, Russia would have to use that same digital digital currency. But, you know, there's a way that they can uh, work around this whole um, getting it back into fiat thing that, you know, Christine Lagarde is kind of, you know, missing the point here about crypto. You don't need to, all, you know, people that are involved in crypto in the future, um, they don't see um, converting that back into fiat doesn't make much sense. If that fiat count currency is, is basically worth nothing, um, why would you, you know, convert it back into fiat? Um, at the moment, obviously, fiat currency is, is king. Um, either the euro or the dollar, whatever it is, you need um, those dollars to, to buy goods and services and all that. But in the future, uh, what Russia could be doing uh, with China or Iran or whatever, they could just have their own digital currency that they use with each other, right? So they wouldn't have to convert it back into fiat. So as much as Christine Lagarde is kind of, she understands maybe how they could, you know, stop uh, Russia from doing this, but she doesn't really, I guess she doesn't understand that they don't need to really convert it back to fiat if they don't want to, right? But even though, on the other hand, um, with uh, crypto right now, the, the infrastructure really isn't there, of the liquidity isn't really there to be moving around, you know, millions of dollars, um, like how Russia, you know, in China, or whoever wants to do business with them, um, the way they want to use it right now, the infrastructure and the liquidity really isn't there yet, right? So as much as people are out there saying, you know, we could, uh, Russia could use crypto to circumvent these sanctions, it would be really hard for them to use decentralized exchanges um, because there's not a lot of liquidity there, right? It's just um, these decentralized exchanges have only been around for about a year now, year, two years tops. Um, there's not a, enough liquidity um, to use it the way ru the Russian government and um, other countries would want to use it. Uh, but let's get into this other tweet that I saw, Moon Lambo, and it, it touches on the same topic here. Um, so Moon Lambo tweeted this out: Financial institutions have the same legal requirements regarding KYC, AML sanctions, uh, etc., regardless of which networks, RippleNet, Swift, etc. All right, what's going on here? I don't want to scan my computer right now. Remind me later. See what happens here, guys. My computer is terrible. Okay. <laughs> so let me read that again. Financial institutions have the same legal requirements regarding KYC, AML sanctions, etc., regardless of which networks, you know, RippleNet, Swift, etc., are used to facilitate payments and settlement. Uh, geopolitics regarding Russia don't impact decentralized cryptos like XRP any more than Bitcoin. So what you're seeing out there is a lot of people talking about how, um, you know, these uh, sanctions with Russia, you know, Russia could just start using XRP and Ripple. Um, to get around these sanctions, right? That's bullish for crypto and bullish for XRP. Um, that's hopium. That is nonsense, honestly. Um, they could not use, even if they wanted to use RippleNet, even if, you know, Ripple, the company, would allow um, Russia to use RippleNet, which they definitely would not because Ripple is a U.S. country. Um, so there's no way. I mean, they would just put them out of business. That would be like a, you know, that would be the worst idea in the world, right? But in the same sense, they could not even use RippleNet anyway because Ripple is um, KYC AML regulated, right? Um, they, it would be easy to stop Russia from using RippleNet. But, you know, people out there all of a sudden saying, you know, they're going to use XRP and Ripple. Um, not, not the case, right? That's not the reason why this is bullish for XRP and Ripple. 
The reason why this is bullish for XRP and Ripple is because all of a sudden, um, Swift is being talked about more than I've ever heard, right? In the last 72, hour, 72 hours, I've heard Swift more than I've heard it in the last two years. You know, Swift is a payment system, right? And it's a clunky, old, 50-year-old um, payment system that costs a lot of money. It doesn't really work half the time. Um, RippleNet and XRP, utilizing XRP and RippleNet, um, is the new payment system that they're trying to take over Swift. So what is bullish about all this is that all of a sudden everybody's talking about Swift, they're talking about uh, new payment systems, um, and Ripple is, has a, already a well-established, um, basically, replacement for Swift. So, guys, Russia is not going to use XRP. They're not going to use um, Ripple. Um, that's nonsense. Anybody who thinks that is just is blowing smoke up your ass. Um, why this is bullish is because it's getting the attention out there about what Swift is and how Swift doesn't really work as, as well, obviously, as RippleNet and uh, using utilizing XRP as on-demand liquidity. Um, that basically um, is what Ripple has been going after for the last eight and a half years. They're trying to, um, if not replace Swift, they're trying to basically take a lot of the business away from Swift, right? I think I mentioned yesterday that Swift, um, I believe it is about four or five uh, trillion dollars a day that they transact, and I believe it's about 400 um, $400 trillion a year that they transact on the SWIFT system. So if Ripple and RippleNet utilizing XRP are trying to go after that business, you think that might have something to do with the price of XRP? If they somehow even get, like I talked about, maybe 10 to 15% of that $400 trillion a year business, you don't think that's going to have any effect on the price of XRP? I mean, that's what you need to be thinking about, Right. You're not thinking about Russia using XRP. No, you're thinking about Russia using Ripple. That is nonsense. That will never happen. The big picture guy, he, guys here is the attention all of a sudden around SWIFT and alternate payment systems, right? Um, Ripple has been around for about eight years now. You know, banks know what they uh, what Ripple is. I think they work with 300 plus banks around the world. And I believe it's now 50 plus countries around the world. So... Look at the big picture, guys. Stop looking at this nonsense. Um, even uh, Ben Armstrong, big boy crypto, was talking about Russia getting off of the SWIFT system. How does this affect XRP's price? That's nonsense, guys. <laughs> Absolute nonsense. The hopium out there all of a sudden around XRP um, with you know Russia getting taken out of the SWIFT system, um, you're looking at this in the wrong way, right? Like I said, the attention around SWIFT and RippleNet are, are going to be there now, right? You see other countries for sure seeing what's happening with with uh, uh, Russia, and they're going to be looking at alternate payment systems. And RippleNet is the number one alternate payment system out there at the moment. So just wanted to squash that hopium that I've been seeing around around Twitter and around social media. Um, but all in all, everything going on around uh, in around this right now is bullish for Bitcoin. It's bullish for crypto. It's bullish for XRP. It's bullish for all. Um, crypto as a whole, for sure, because, you know, alternate alternate payment systems, um, you know, Russia getting around sanctions using crypto, um, Ukraine getting uh, f almost $15 million in, in, um, in crowdfunding for the, the Ukrainian military and the Ukrainian people using crypto. Um, all of a sudden, it's just a lot of attention around crypto with everything going on. And look at here in Moscow, huge lines of people ho hoping to take out cash. So there is a run on the banks in, in Moscow and in Russia. And what if you're a Russian citizen, right? And you know that these a bunch of sanctions are about to come down on, on basically the ruble and, and the banks in your country. Um, obviously, the, the value of the ruble is going to go down, right? So as a, as a Russian citizen, where would you want to put your money um, in a place where it would be safe, where it would, wouldn't lose its value? You think crypto would be an option for sure, right? And also, if you, people are going to these ATMs, right, and they're taking out a bunch of cash, and say someone has like a bag of cash and they're trying to get around, um, they're uh, they get pulled over. It's signs, you know, signs will tell you the Russian government would probably take their money, right? Um, you know, money, cash isn't really safe in Russia. If you had, if you're hiding your cash around somewhere, that's dangerous to be a Russian citizen, especially during a war. Um, what would be safer? You know, one of those little zip drives, those those nano ledgers. If you can put your money into crypto where it doesn't lose the value because, you know, obviously um, or it can be loses value, but not in the way that obviously the ruble is going to lose value. 
but you can keep it on one of those thumb drives and you can hide that away um, way better than you can hide away, you know, a bag of cash, right? So very interesting what's going on with this run, run of the banks. We saw this in, in, in Canada, obviously, recently. That's the reason why they stopped this Emergencies Act in Canada, because it was a run on the banks and that would take business away from the banks. Um, you know, like I said, a lot of attention around crypto right now. You know, with everything, all these geopolitical events going on around the world, um, it's becoming more um, viable on why crypto uh, it should be such a big thing moving towards the future, right? It's a safer, it's a hedge against inflation. It's a hedge against, you know, these geopolitical events. Um, it just it hasn't looked more viable um, in years, for sure, right, with everything going on. So, like I said, very bullish for crypto out there with everything going on out there in the world. Um, definitely am looking forward to seeing what happens with all this, but I just want to say at the end of the video, thoughts and prayers go to the Ukrainian people. Keep fighting that power, guys. Um, can't believe you guys have been holding on to that capital for up to four or five days now. Um, you know, so much respect for the Ukrainian people in this fight against such a powerhouse as like Russia is. And uh, like I said, thoughts and prayers out to the Ukrainian people. But I'll end the video there, guys. Remember, just please like and subscribe and leave comments down below. But remember, I am not a financial advisor. Please do not take anything I write or say as financial advice. This is for educational purposes only. And thanks, guys. And we'll see you on the next one.